Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Rose, and if you're like me, you've been fascinated with van life for a long time. But I don't have the means to buy a van of my own and build it out from bones to finish. And I also don't really have the budget to rent one for the week and try it out. So that leaves me with my car. And if you're lucky, you may have a truck, SUV, van, something reasonable to build out. But me, I have a Honda CRV. We have limited space in here, limited budget. And honestly, a build out by myself seemed a little too complicated until I found this video. This video will be linked below and I recommend that you watch it because honestly, it gave me the inspiration and motivation I needed to complete this job on my own. So first step, measure once, measure twice, make your sketch, and then measure it again. <laughs> After doing all of that and only having a tiny bit of faith in my own measurements, I headed to the land of the dads. Home Depot is unreasonably intimidating. There is, there's no reason for it to be scary, yet I was immediately scared as soon as I walked in. I had to pick my own plywood and two by fours, and all I knew was the measurements of the plywood. Thankfully, there are some very helpful contractors there who asked me a series of questions such as indoor or outdoor, are you gonna paint it or are you gonna stain it? And helped me pick a wood. <laughs> I then got one of the workers to cut the plywood for me, which I had a pre-drawn plan with me. There's a whole article I found about how to get your wood properly cut at Home Depot. I will link it below. It makes the process so much smoother because I had a drawing, I knew exactly what I needed, all my measurements. All I had to do was show up with the plywood and he did the rest and it was so nice. Now the cuts are not entirely accurate and they are not guaranteed accurate. So I gave myself about an inch on everything and that seemed to be good. Also at Home Depot, I hit up my supply list and got the supplies I think I need, but I can see a trip to Home Depot in my future again. So let's get to working. Welcome to the basement. This will be my construction zone as it is raining outside. So we're gonna try to build in here, hope it goes well and put it in the car. So I just wanted to show you guys how much I have thought about different iterations of this build. So this is my like, I want a camper van notebook. So first we have a build out for a shuttle bus fully mapped. We have all of the supplies and prices, all of the extras that could possibly happen camper insurance, how to deal with that. Then I wanted to slide in truck camper. So I have a whole page on that. For about an hour, I wanted a Ford Ecolon Sportsmobile. Um, so there's nothing on this page. And we finally landed on the Honda CRV camper, removable. So there are a few things I wanted to tick off with this build. And I really wasn't gonna do the build unless these things were possible. So the first was that I need to be able to set it up by myself. Maybe not get it in the car by myself, but transform it from driving to sleeping by myself. I didn't wanna change anything to the interior of my car. I have a fuel efficient, like nice car, and I wanna be able to use my car as a car, but also use it as a camper. So it has to be removable. Another requirement is for Zach to be able to lay down flat in the car. Um, Zach is six feet tall, so this is a little bit of a challenge. We're gonna sort of do a two panel design with a hinge at the top. I've already had a few iterations of this design and it's only been about two weeks. So we'll see what actually turns about. What has not changed is the bed platform. What is changing is like, do I want drawers? Do I want a table? Do I wanna do covered drawers? Do I wanna do this? and all of these different options, but yeah. I 
do the other fourth. <laughs> I'm just gonna explain really fast how I cut these, or like figured out the length of these next pieces. So there's two boards on here. The second board that will slide and come up here. So I basically slid it up a little bit. I measured down to the car and then I subtracted the three fourths into that the plywood is so that it would be the underneath length to make it even. So I'm gonna see if I did it right. We'll slide these out. Oops, lost one. I need to go get a level, hold on. Hmm. Okay, now I'm going to, so this is a bolt, obviously. Um, and I'm just gonna make this into its own drop pin, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna use a huge bit and screw a huge hole so I can just like drop in and then take it out because this will be the piece that slides off of the back onto the front and needs some support, so. extender piece because the little hinges I know this is a weird angle but this is a weird piece so this is technically in between the two boards so this is the backboard and this piece still has some like wiggle room so it's not perfect but basically it's supposed to connect the two boards so they don't slide apart um, while also supporting the middle of the board so this is the back piece front piece and the front piece will slide to sit on this piece of wood and then drop pin in so it's not sliding front and back. So let me sort of show. So now the two pins are in and the two boards are theoretically connected. Sorry if you can't hear me very well. We are outside, obviously, because I'm in my car. Um, I have finished the base part of the build, and while doing the build, I decided to split it into sort of three phases, three different videos, and this first video is the base build. So this will just be the platform they sleep on. The second phase will be like making the mattress, making the window covers, doing all the inside extra stuff to make it actually sleepable instead of just plywood. And then the third part will be extras, which you technically don't have to do, but I want to do, such as a drawer, a table, and then like a front sort of nightstand thing, if that makes any sense. I'm first gonna show you how I get the build inside of my car, and then I'll show you a few little details of things that I did. So the first step is actually moving all of the seats. So let's do that first. Now that we have this space to, let's put everything in.
so I'm just gonna walk through really quickly what I did. Again, I did follow um, this video and it's in the description. So if you want to sort of go along with this process, she does a way better job of explaining it and she has build plans. I'll measure my, um, I'll measure this and put some dimensions of what it actually turned out to be because of the errors done while cutting, but they ended up being the positives because it fit better in my car. But anyway, so there's three pieces so that it can actually fold entirely into the trunk with the back seats up. So you have this back piece, which is everything is screwed together back here. These are nine inch legs. Then there's a second piece, which is the same exact size as this back piece with a hinged second piece so that it can be smaller and actually be the correct size to fit in the trunk. Everything that isn't screwed in, so it needs to come apart to collapse, is done with a drop pin. So I couldn't actually find like a specific drop pin I wanted. So I just got a bolt that was smaller than my largest drill bit and then just have a bolt with nothing securing it so it can drop in and out. So now I'm gonna show you how it collapses in to just be the trunk so I can still use the rest of the car during transportation. I just wanted to give a quick rundown of the design and measurements. This is the back of the car and this is the front of the car. So we have three separate pieces of wood. These two are identical pieces and this one is slightly smaller and attached by the hinge. So our measurements for our total design are 79 inches long by 42 and this means it's about as long as a queen mattress, but the sizes are in between a twin and a full. So a pretty odd size bed. Then this top piece is 15, and both of these pieces are 32. And now let's go over the leg heights really quickly. So each panel has the same length of legs. So all of the legs in this one are nine inches, all of the legs in this section are six inches, and these two legs are actually 19, because those go all the way to the floor. Um, there's a piano hinge right here, and that was actually 30 inches. This is that special piece of wood in the middle that I talked about earlier. One side is nine, one side is six, and there's a tiny piece in the middle, so that's why it's broken out like that. But again, really quick, the full design is 42 by 79. That 79 is broken into 15, 32, and 32. All the legs in this back panel are 9 inches. These three legs are 6 inches, and these two legs are 19 inches. And I connected these two pieces with a 30-inch piano hinge. Oh, also all my screws were 2.5 inches, just so you know. Okay, a quick financial run-through so you can understand the price of the base project alone. First, from Home Depot, we got the 4x8 plywood. Um, this is which plywood I got. It is $63.88. Then I got a piano hinge for $8.53. 2.5 inch screws for $5.50. 2.5 inch bolts for $2.16. And a 3 foot length of 2x4 for $4.56. And then the next day I went to Lowe's and got a new piece of 2x4, which was 8 feet long, and that was $11.18. And I technically didn't use all of that wood because we still have that. So I've already been gathering this stuff for phase two of this project, which is the interior, decorating, the bed, the windows, covers, the lights, the fans, all that good stuff. And that will be coming out next week. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. And I'll see you there. Bye.